All right, Th this year's being a little different, we, but we still wanted to have some gifts for uh, people that are doing the lion's share of the work here at the church. And so I have a small gift here from the congregation for you, Pastor. Thank you, Dan. And also for you, Stephanie. Thank you. And also for, for Taylor. And we'll get his to him uh, later. And we just uh, really appreciate all that you and Stephanie and Taylor have done for us, keeping our services and stuff going through this time. Dan, thank you so very much. You're welcome. I just want to let some of you know that, uh, I mean, you know the role I play. Stephanie is our uh, parish administrator, and she does all our videoing during the live services or during the recorded ones. Taylor does all our video editing, and he's also the church organist. And so uh, what you see every Sunday um, is the fruit of many labors. And our choir sings, and Stephanie does all the editing for our Wednesday's Word. Thank you so very much. Thank you, Dan. God bless You're you. You're welcome. Merry Christmas. I know this Christmas is a little different. My guess is in the 120 year history of Trinity, we've never done just a virtual service. So tonight is a first. We record this on Monday, but with a thought for where you are right now on Christmas Eve. This is our candlelight service. So if you have candles, we invite you to have them close because there will be a time when you can light those candles and reflect and sing praises to our newborn King. So let's begin our time with worship with a prayer. Father in heaven, we thank you for the great gift you've given us in the person of your son, Jesus. On this holy night, we celebrate his grace, this great gift, that came in humility, wrapped in swaddling clothes, wrapped in flesh and blood, full humanity, full deity, the God who came to save us. And so, Lord, we thank you that we can celebrate tonight in the fullness of your grace, in the glorious light of your Son. For we pray this in Jesus' name. Amen. Our invocation and call to worship. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with you all. Amen. Arise and shine, for your light has come, and the glory of the Lord has risen upon you. The people walking in darkness have seen a great light. On those living in the land of the shadow of death, a light has dawned. To us a child is born, to us a son is given and the government will be upon his shoulders and he will be called wonderful counselor mighty god everlasting father prince of peace we proclaim the praises of him who called us out of darkness into his marvelous light let's join in singing our opening hymn
confession and absolution for this evening. The Holy Spirit has shown the light of God's love into our hearts, giving us faith to believe that the darkness of our sin has indeed been dispelled by the coming of Christ in the flesh. Let us therefore go to God's throne of grace, confessing our sins. Wonderful Counselor, we confess that we have listened to the advice of the dark world around us. We have let the gloom of the nations and the difficulties of our personal lives blind us to the light of your love. Forgive us, mighty God. We confess that we have ascribed too much power to the forces of evil in this world of sin. We have failed to recognize you as the glorious Lord over all. Forgive us, everlasting Father. We confess that in our daily dilemmas we have forgotten the great forgiving love that prompted Christ to become one of us and to die for us. We have not always sought to live in your light. Forgive us, Prince of Peace. We confess that we have not recognized the peace that you have brought to our discordant lives. It does not fill our hearts and minds. So forgive us, we pray. The good news is, to us a child is born, to us a son is given. Christ's eternal reign is broken through to our time and place with the brilliant light of his mercy and forgiveness. All your sins are forgiven in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Arise and shine, for your light has come and the glory of the Lord has risen upon you. We pray. Father in heaven, we thank you that you have sent us your Son. So Lord, on this Christmas Eve, we pray, O oh Lord, that you would continue to lift our spirits and guide our ways and shatter the darkness. And Lord, shine in us and for us and through us to drive away all fear, all doubt, all self-centeredness, that we might fix our eyes on Jesus, who is the glorious light, the giver of life, and the source of our new life in him. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Son. Thank you, Holy Spirit. In Jesus' name, amen.
Our first reading is from Isaiah chapter 9, verses 1 through 7. But there will be no gloom for her who was in anguish. In the former time he brought into contempt the land of Zebulun and the land of Naphtali. But in the latter time he has made glorious the way of the sea and the land beyond the Jordan, Galilee of the nations. The people who walked in darkness have seen a great light. Those who dwelt in the land of deep darkness, on them light shined. You have multiplied the nation. You have increased its joy. They rejoice before you, as with joy at the harvest, as they are glad when they divided the spoil. For the yoke of his burden and the staff of his shoulder, the rod of his oppressor, you have broken as on the day of Midian. For every boot of the tramping warrior in battle tumult and every garment rolled in blood will be burned as fuel for the fire. For to us a child is born, to us a son is given, and the government shall be upon his shoulder, and his name shall be called Wonderful, Counselor, Mighty God, Everlasting Father, Prince of Peace. Of the increase of his government and of peace there will be no end on the throne of David and over his kingdom to establish it and to uphold it with justice and with righteousness. From this time forth and forevermore, the zeal of the Lord of hosts will do this. This is the word of the Lord. Our second reading is from Second Timothy chapter 1, verses 8 through 10. Therefore do not be ashamed of the testimony of, about our Lord, nor of me, his prisoner, but share in suffering for the gospel by the power of God, who saved us and called us to a holy calling, not because of our works, but because of his own purpose and grace, which he gave us in Christ Jesus before the ages began, and which now have been manifested through the appearing of our Savior, Christ Jesus, who abolished death and brought life and immortality to light through the gospel. This is the word of the Lord.
The Holy Gospel for this Christmas Eve is the traditional Gospel reading, Luke's account of the Nativity of our Lord. From Luke chapter 2, Glory to you, O Lord. In those days, a decree went out from Caesar Augustus that all the world should be registered. This was the first registration while Quirinius was governor of Syria. And all went to be registered, each to his own town. And Joseph also went up from Galilee, from the town of Nazareth to Judea, to the city of David, which is called Bethlehem, because he was of the house and the lineage of David, to be registered with Mary, his betrothed, who was with child. And while they were there, the time came for her to give birth. And she gave birth to her firstborn son, and she wrapped him in swaddling cloths and laid him in a manger because there was no place for them in the inn. And in the same region, there were shepherds out in their field, keeping watch over their flock by night. And an angel of the Lord appeared to them, and the glory of the Lord shone around them, and they were filled with great fear. And the angel said to them, Fear not, for behold, I bring you good news of great joy that will be for all the people. For unto you is born this day in the city of David a Savior, who is Christ the Lord, and this will be a sign for you. You will find a baby wrapped in swaddling cloths and lying in a manger. And suddenly there was the angel, with the angel, a multitude of the heavenly hosts, praising God and saying, Glory to God in the highest, and on earth peace among those with whom he is pleased. When the angels went away from them into heaven, the shepherds said to one another, Let us go over to Bethlehem and see this thing that has happened, which the Lord has made known to us. And they went with haste, and they found Mary and Joseph and the baby lying in a manger. And when they saw it, they made known the saying that had been told them concerning this child. And all who heard it wondered at what the shepherds told them. But Mary treasured up all these things, pondering them in her heart. And the shepherds returned, glorifying and praising God for all that they had heard and seen, as it had been told them. This is the gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, O Christ. On this holy night, may God the Father, Christ the Son, and the Holy Spirit fill our hearts and bless this message that the words of my mouth and meditation of our hearts would be pleasing in His sight. In Jesus' name, amen. There are many Christmas classics, but one in particular, A Christmas Carol by Charles Dickens, stands out 
tonight. It's about Ebenezer Scrooge and that one Christmas Eve, that Christmas night that changed his heart and changed his life. It's a story that makes us feel good because they lived happily ever after, that in, into the darkness of his caved-in self, he sprung to life again. But it's maybe the lines of another of Dickens' novels that describes the way Christmas is for many of us, or at least how it feels. It is the beginning of the novel, The Tale of Two Cities. And I quote, it was the best of times and it was the worst of times. It was the age of wisdom and the age of foolishness. It, it was the epic of belief and the epic of unbelief. It was the season of light and a season of darkness. It was the spring of hope and the winter of despair. We had everything before us and nothing before us. That's what Dickens writes. You see, Christmas is a time of contrast. Christmas is a season of light and a season of darkness. Christmas brings the spring of hope and the winter of acute despair. Christmas is a time of family togetherness and yet excruciating loneliness. And in this Christmas, with the specter of a virus uh, unheard of last year, but in every day's news. The togetherness is distant. It is masked. It is morphed by regulations and guidance and care to keep it from spreading. So friends, I know we desire Christmas to be the best of times. We gather with loved ones to exchange gifts, to, to exchange warm embraces and festival meals. We want the best of times. But sometimes the truth is it, it's hard and it is lonely. And we come out knowing that we have overspent, that we've over-traveled, that we've over-functioned. And we wonder, truly, what is Christmas all about? Isaiah 9 tells us, it says, the people who walked in darkness, those who dwelt in the land of deep darkness. And here Isaiah is specific. He's speaking about the people sitting in darkness in the land of Zebulun and Naphtali, the land beyond the Jordan in Galilee of the Gentiles. You see, these, these two brothers, Zebulun and Naphtali, they were two of Jacob's 12 sons that went with him into Egypt. For 430 years there, they, they went through great suffering, through slavery, through very dark times until God delivered. And then for 40 years, they wandered in the wilderness until those who, who had rebelled against God died off in that wilderness. And finally, they get to settle in the promised land, in that land beyond the Jordan, in Galilee of the Gentiles. Fast forward 700 years to the time of Isaiah the prophet. The Assyrian army has attacked this same region. These northern tribes, they have defeated their armies. They have leveled their cities. They've exiled those that survived far away, far away from their homes and their place of worship. For them, it was the worst of times. They walked in darkness and they dwelt in a land of great darkness. We all know about deep darkness. Those things that keep you up at night, the wayward child, the broken marriage, job loss, business shutdowns, people struggle with rising costs and mounting debt, with old wounds that don't seem to heal and with new wounds that just won't go away. And so we miss loved ones. And maybe in this Christmas, it is because of the distance or a death or divided families or cruel design. But there is a more foreboding darkness that affects every one of us. Jesus speaks of it in John chapter 3, verse 19. He explains it this way. This is the verdict that light has come into the world, but people love darkness instead of light because their deeds were evil. You see, too often we love the darkness in just the right spots, a, a self-centered narcissism. Love 
We love the darkness of lies and half-truths, at least if they are our own. And we long for more of the darkness that feeds the sinful desires of within. Is that the end of the story? Not hardly. Listen again to Isaiah the prophet. The people who walked in darkness have seen a great light. Those who dwelt in the land of deep darkness, on them the light has shined. This is not just any ordinary light. This is a great light, the greatest of all light. Consider this. The first light that that shined in the land of Zebulun and Naphtali, we might say, was Gideon. Gideon, who was one of the judges, who God used to defeat 120,000 Midianites with just 300 men. Judges 7.20 describes it this way. They were grasping their torches in one hand, their trumpets that they would blow in their other, and they shouted out, A sword for the Lord and for Gideon. 300 torches. What a light. But the victory was the Lord's. Soon another light would shine in the land. King Josiah marched north with the burning torch of the newfound word of God. It had been so lost by the people of God in the temple that they didn't even know it still existed. But they found it when they were house cleaning. When Josiah wanted to fix up the temple, they found the word of God. It brought profound change in Josiah's life, and he brought it to all of God's people. And as that light spread, what a mighty light it was. As the psalmist says, your word is a lamp to my feet and a light to my path. And it brought reform to their worship and renewal of their faith through God's powerful word. It was a great light. But the greatest light was yet to come. The light of which Isaiah speaks was not yet to appear. For he says, to us a child is born, to us a son is given, and the government will be on his shoulders, and he will be called Wonderful Counselor, Mighty God, Everlasting Father, Prince of Peace. Majesty would appear among the mundane. Holiness in the middle of cow manure. Divinity entering the world on the floor of a stable, through the womb of a teenager, in the presence of a bewildered carpenter. And that stable is likely a stone cave hewn out of the rock, a dark, damp place, so dark by contrast to the glories of heaven, and so tempered in human flesh as a little baby boy. For the first time, parents, this glorious light had come. Born in obscurity, but of his birth, all time would be measured. You see, Jesus Christ is the light that took on flesh, that he might take you up in his arms tonight, that he would heal your hurts and forgive your sins and destroy the darkness. Jesus took on flesh, not to demonstrate the innocence of infancy, but in order to live the life we could not and die the death we need not. Jesus is dazzling light. He is brilliant light. He's eternal light, life-giving light, renewing and sustaining light. No wonder in the Nicene Creed we confess that he is the light of lights. With Gideon, the light would soon burn out as people began to worship idols again and as his own son led them into anarchy. With Josiah, the the light would soon burn out by his death at the hands of Pharaoh Necho in the Battle of Megiddo, 2 Kings 23. Would the light of Jesus burn out as well? Would it cease to shine or flicker and fail? Would the betrayal and the blood and the burial be the final curtain for Jesus, God's Son? Not on your life. Isaiah writes, of the increase of his government and peace, there will be no end, no end. 
The grave held Jesus for three days. Now he is alive. He is risen indeed. His promises are sure. His light shines. There is no end to his love. There is no enemy he cannot conquer. There is nothing in all of creation that can separate you from the love of God that is in Christ Jesus our Lord. So just think for a moment. It was December 17th, 1903, where Orville and Wilbur Wright got their flying machine off the ground. The airplane was born. To their excitement, they sent a telegraph to their sister Catherine, and it read these few words, flew 120 feet, will be home for Christmas. She was so excited. She knew all the experiments. She knew all the failures. So she runs all the way to the local newspaper. She goes up to the editor. She shows him the good news of the telegraph. And he looks at it and he reads it. Oh, he said, oh, that's good. The Wright brothers will be home for Christmas. And you see, he missed the whole point of the good news. He completely missed the point. Yes, it was nice that the Wright brothers would be home for Christmas, but a person had flown in an airplane for the first time in world history. It was big news, and he didn't get it. How often do we miss the big news, the, the point of Christmas? We get excited about a vaccine that will bring hope against a virus, but there is a hope that shines in the person of Jesus that helps us through every heartache, every hurt, every disease, every loss. Jesus says in John 8, verse 12, I am the light of the world. He who follows me will never walk in darkness, but will have the light of life. We miss the point of Christmas. When we get so preoccupied with the tinsel and the toys and with the trees and the trimmings, they are nice. Just like the Wright brothers being home for Christmas was nice. But the point of Christmas is that God took flight, that he traveled from heaven to earth, from, from, from obs obscurity in Bethlehem, he would rise. He would rise to be in your life and in mine. He went from eternity into time so that we might know God's love embodied in a person, in the person of his son. And nothing in this world can darken that or take it away from you. Friends in Christ, God in flesh, made manifest, came to save us all. So whether tonight you feel like it is the best of times or the worst of times, the spring of hope or the winter of despair, the birth of Jesus announced by Isaiah, witnessed by the shepherds, marveled at by the Magi, leaves us with the good news of great joy. And what would that be? The people who walked in darkness have seen a great light. On those who dwelt in the land of deep darkness, on them the light has shined. So let his light shine to the core of your being, to the center of your relationships, the, the place that only Jesus can transform, for he transforms our hearts and he gives us life, real life, abundant life, joy-filled life, no matter what times are like. He will meet you where you are tonight. And he will warm you with a great light. In Jesus' name, amen. Now may the peace of the Christ child guide and keep you and fill you with his fullness. In Jesus' name. Amen. Now, in response to the good news we've received, we get an opportunity to give our gifts to the Lord who became a gift for us. And so we invite you to participate in that way, either by uh, giving to the Lord through Trinity, by mailing in an offering, or by going to our website, and you can give an offering that way too. It is given to the Lord through uh, the vehicle of his church, 
so we continue our worship. Let's turn to the Lord in prayer. Light of the world, hear our prayer and shine on our darkness. Lord Jesus, you brought the light of life into the darkness of our sinful world. Shine that light on us that we may be kept in the one true faith. Light of the world, hear our prayer and shine on our darkness. Lord Jesus, we thank you for the miracle of your birth and for the miracle of our rebirth. Assure us of our baptismal promises so that we who are born, not of blood, nor of the will of the flesh, nor of the will of man, but of God, may live each day as children of the light, light of the world. Hear our prayer and shine on our darkness. Lord Jesus, the world was made through you yet the world does not know you. Give to us all, give to us and all of your people the joy and zeal of the shepherds, so that we also may make known the truth that we have been called out of darkness into your marvelous light, light of the world. Hear our prayer and shine on our darkness. Lord Jesus, Provide for those without homes or jobs or food or friends in this sacred season. Assure them that even when no one else seems to care, you will never abandon them with the gifts you have given to us. Use us to provide for everyone in need so that through us, even those most destitute may experience your providing care. Light of the world, hear our prayer and shine on our darkness. Lord Jesus, you came to abolish death and bring life and immortality to light through the gospel. Receive our praise and hear our prayers, for you live and reign with the Father and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. And Lord, on this holy night, we turn to you in the prayer that you have taught us, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. We've come to that point in our service when it's time for the lighting of the candles. It's traditional to start with the Christ candle, the center of the candelabra. 
As we light our candles, we remember and worship our Savior, Jesus Christ, God's light of love. Arise and shine, for your light has come, and the glory of the Lord rises upon you. When Jesus spoke again to the people, he said, I am the light of the world. Whoever follows me will never walk in darkness, but will have the light of life. For you were once darkness, but now you are light in the Lord. Live as children of light, for the fruit of the light consists in all goodness, righteousness, and truth. In the same way, let your light shine before men, that they may see good deeds and praise your Father in heaven. So we have three Christmas carols to sing as we light our candles. It starts with Christ and the Christ candle. As it spreads from one to another, so our faith spreads as we share the light of Christ, the truth of his love, and all that he has done for us and came to do. So let us sing.
receive the blessing of the Lord. May you be filled with the wonder of Mary, the faithfulness of Joseph, the joy of the angels, the eagerness of the shepherds, the determination of the Magi, and the light of the Christ child. And may the Almighty God, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit shine on you now and forevermore. May you go in peace, in the fullness of his joy, in the blessedness of his love. May you celebrate Christmas and know that God is with you now and always. You are in our thoughts and in our prayers. We look forward to spending this new year with you. So God's peace go with you. In Jesus' name, amen.